In this video, I'll show you how to add electric control in two directions for a Newtonian telescope using an Arduino and stepper motors. This project will require an Arduino, any type will work. Stepper motors, I'm using the bipolar type and an A4988 stepper motor driver and you will need two drivers. And I'll put a product link for all of this in the description below. All right, let's go over how we're gonna connect the A4988 stepper driver module. The first thing we're going to do is look at the pin layout. And the way I have this organized is I have the screw here at the bottom, which is an adjustment screw that regulates how much current can be output from the driver. And the, we're going to start in the upper right hand corner. And the first pin in the upper right is going to be VMOT. This will be the motor supply supplied to the motor itself. And this can accept up to 35 volts. The next pin is the ground pin for the motor. Now between the motor and the ground power supply, we need to add a capacitor. And they recommend a 100 microfarad capacitor. I don't exactly have that 100, I have a little bit larger, but that's okay. And so I'll show you how that's hooked up on my breadboard. Now if you have a shield, you'll see that the capacitor is already installed. And this particular shield that I bought except up to four uh, drivers. I'm not going to be using it, but you can certainly do so. Uh, this one plugs directly to an UNO, and I don't have an UNO, so I just decided to manually uh, hook up the A4998. Now, the next four pins are 2B and 2A, 1B and 1A, and these are the motor pair wirings for a bipolar stepper motor. And so uh, the motor that I uh, bought, it didn't have a wiring diagram, so I'm going to show you how to find out how to hook this up. So if you look at uh, how a typical bipolar is set up, you have two pairs. And what this means is the uh, coils from a particular pair will have continuity between them. So all you have to do is get out an ohmmeter and find the continuity between two pairs. And in my case, they were ordered uh, right next to each other. And it doesn't matter whether you have one or two in the swapped, as long as you have a motor pair between 2B and 2A and 1B and 1A. And so I will show you how I did that uh, a little bit later. But this is, this is the theory behind it. Now, on the next two pins are going to be VDD and ground, and this is the digital supply, and this has a maximum input of 5.5 and a minimum of 3, so make sure that you observe that, and do not try and power this with a 12 volt, it's very important. The next pin is the step pin, and this is paired with the direction pin. And these are digital inputs, which we will input from the Arduino microcontroller. And I'll show you how to set that up a little bit later. The next pin is a sleep pin. And if this is low, it's disabled. So if you don't hook anything up to it, the uh, motor controller will be shut off. The next pin is the reset pin. And this will be shut off unless it is high. So we have a way of uh, addressing this without sending impulses from the microcontroller to control this. And we can save a couple of pin outputs. And that is if we jump between the sleep and the reset with a jumper, then the uh, stepper driver will always be on. And so that is how I'm going to wire this one up. The next three pins control the microstepping. And we have a handy little chart and you can get this in a number of places. And basically, it's very, very simple. If you do nothing, then all three pins, MS1, MS2, and MS3, will be low, and that'll be a full step, so that's the default. So if you just hook it up and uh, send it on its merry way, you just have single steps. But for the application that I'm using is going to be the motor control for a telescope, I need the, the highest resolution that I can possibly get. So I'm going to wire mine to be 16 steps, and maybe you want to do yours differently. 
So this is very simple. All we have to do is put a digital logic high to each of the three pins, and then that will turn this into 16 steps. The last pin is enable, and if this is high, then this disables. So what that means, if you leave it low, then it's enabled. All right, let's go through the setup on these two prototyping boards and see how I have this hooked up. Starting with the stepper driver, we have a five volt positive and ground for the digital. And then on the motor supply, we have 12 volt positive and negative for both boards. So I have a 12 volt bus on this side and a five volt bus on this side. And then I've uh, salvaged a connection from an old hard drive and then I can plug in my standard 12 volt, five volt interface right here. So the five volt bus will also power the Arduino over here. To control the direction and the step of both of the motors, we have a purple and a white for each of these. And then they come back over here to digital output pins and we'll go over the pin orientation when we look at the Arduino sketch. But this, the great thing about these driver boards is that you only need a direction and a step per motor and that reduces the number of outputs and greatly simplifies the design. Now to control the direction and speed, we have four push buttons and I will mount these in a nice little box when this is ready to solder up. But we have basically an up and a down and a right and a left. So these are up and down for the uh, telescope and then right and left and then here we have a potentiometer right here now if we turn this all the way to the left like that then when we go into the sketch you will see how we're handling the slowest speed possible and this will be approximately one micro step every half second, something like that, so that we have as fine a control as we possibly can. I forgot to mention a couple other things on the driver boards. So let's go back over here. One thing you need a decoupling capacitor and they are hooked up according to polarity with the negative on the negative of course. Now I showed you previously about the section right here for the digital inputs. The pins 3 and 4 on this side are shorted together with these jumper wires and that will make sure that the stepper driver is on at all times. And to do the 1 16th micro stepping, then we have jumped these three inputs, MS1, MS2, and MS3 for both drivers to the positive side of the five volt bus. Each driver has four motor controller pins. And so I have these in order and I peeled them off so that they stayed together. And it's 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So when we go to our motor, here's our stepper motor, and we have the connection, then it's going to be one pair here and one pair here. And your stepper motor may be slightly different, but mine worked out this way and I'll show you how I determined that. Now if you happen to have a stepper motor that came with a wiring diagram, that would be great, but mine did not. So if we have a continuity checker and we look at the pin layout, let's try the first pin and the last pin. I'll set this down. Nothing. Third pin. Nothing. Second pin. That means that the red wire and the purple wire are a pair. Likewise, we already know by elimination that the green wire and the black wire will be another pair and they are. So that simply means that one pair is the two, these two wires and the other pair are these two wires. And so when we connect it up to the driver they're going to be in order. It's very very simple at least for the one I have. But you need to check yours before you install it. Let's take a look at the Arduino sketch and see how we can make this work. We are going to start by defining our connections. We have a, a direction in the z-axis and a step in the z-axis, and we'll define those as six and seven. Then we have a direction in the x-y-axis, 
and the step in the x-y axis and that would be 8 and 9 and those correspond to the pins that I mentioned before which would be the purple and the white wires. We're going to define the, the z-axis button pin to be 4, the counterclockwise z-axis button pin to be 3, the clockwise axis in the x-y direction 10 and the counterclockwise to be 11 and that will be our right and left and up and down on those buttons that I previously showed you. The next thing we're going to do is define a red LED pin and a green LED pin, 12 and 5. We'll define the potentiometer value to be 0 to start. The clockwise z-axis button pin will be an input pull-up, as will the other buttons that I just mentioned right here. So that would be 4, 3, 10, and 11. Now for outputs for the green and the red LED, we'll set those pins as outputs and then the potentiometer input will be zero, pin zero. Now for the step and the direction pins, we're going to set these all to be outputs. And that's all we need with the setup. Now we're going to call this potentiometer value an analog read of pin A0. Now here I'm calling a function get speed, which I will discuss in a minute. Before we go into the logic and the switches and all that, I want to start simple and simply get the motor to turn. So I have this commented out, so let's uncomment it. Now I want to upload this and see if we can get the motor to turn. Basically what this is going to do is that we are going to write to the XY pin high, delay 1000 microseconds, write to the XY pin low and delay again. So this will effectively just make the motor turn. And so there's our motor turning. It's going through the loop and it's turning like we told it to. Let's comment this out, re-upload the sketch, and it will stop. I'm going to retrieve the speed from a function called getSpeed. The next thing I do is enter into a switch statement. It says that We'll check the clockwise z-axis button pin. In the case of zero, we're going to set the z-axis clockwise, turn on the green LED, and turn the axis motor at the speed specified. Very simple. In the case of one, we're going to shut off the LED, which will mean that we have pressed the button, we're turning, we release the button, we're not turning. We don't have to define that to not turn the motor because at the end of the loop it automatically stops because it takes the pin low. In the counterclockwise button for the z-axis we do the, the same thing. Here we're looking at the clockwise button and here we're going to look at the counterclockwise z-axis button. Basically saying that if we press this button, do this. So it is, it repeats and it does the same thing except for in a different direction. And that is done right here because we set the z-axis counterclockwise, whereas up here we set it clockwise. So that takes care of the z-axis in both directions. Now moving down to the x-y direction, we do almost exactly the same thing except for we're reading different pins. In this case we're reading the XY axis button pin in the clockwise direction and here we're reading the XY axis and pin in the counterclockwise direction and it does the exact same thing. Moving to the right or up turns the green LED on. Moving to the left or down turns the red LED on. In the case of no button pressed, it just shuts off whatever LED it was last on. So when you write functions like this, you can make the final code a lot quicker and easier to understand and to debug. So now we'll go down and see how we wrote these functions. So we're out of the loop, and now I'm just going to define the functions. So here we have the turn the z-axis motor on and we're going to send a parameter speed. So 
What I want to do here in both cases, whether it's the z-axis or the x-y, when the potentiometer reads zero, I want this to move as slow as it possibly can. And that would be the microfine uh, control at super high magnification with the telescope. So if the speed is greater than 5,000, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to take the input of the potentiometer and vary it over the potentiometer value. And that way it eliminates a bunch of extra buttons. I don't have to have another button that says go really slow. I just turn my potentiometer all the way to the bottom and it goes micro slow. I turn it up just a smidge as it gets past this threshold and then it goes to a different rate. So the way I've done this is that we write the pin high and now we're going to delay at the speed value. And so we're going to delay a long time and then we're going to write the pin low. And that will ensure a single step because as the micro tour is going through the loop over and over and over again like this, you want to delay it so that you can have enough time that it does not go to the next loop before you can release the button. So that makes it go very, very slow. And if we want to follow the potentiometer, then we define a new variable called faster, which is going to take the speed variable and add a different value. In this case, it's going to be 1,000 microseconds different, and that's enough to make this work. So when we write the pin high, and then we wait, we're waiting at a new, va new value. Okay, so this function is very similar to the z-axis. And we only need two functions because the direction pin is a different function. We need four functions to do the direction. Set the z-axis clockwise, set the z-axis counterclockwise, and likewise with the xy-axis clockwise and counterclockwise. And as we define these, we just write out to the step, uh, the direction pin, sorry, the pins that we defined earlier, high and low and high and low. And it's as simple as that. And that way, if you define these functions, you can call them at any time and you have a lot shorter code. Now, the potentiometer goes from 0 to 1023. And so I had to actually write this in reverse because it was, a, it was going in the wrong direction. So I just said if the potentiometer value is less than 10, and the reason I did this is because each potentiometer has a uh, wiper on it, and you may be, it may be 0, it may be 10, um, or 9, or something like that, and you can't always quite catch it due to the resolution of the potentiometer. So through practice, I found that if I just set it anything lower than 10, we're going to return a very long delay, 9,000. If it's greater than 10, this is going to be in our variable motion, and we'll return 1023, which is the maximum, subtracted from the actual value that we read. And we only have four more functions, the red LED on or the red LED off, the green LED on or the green LED off. It's very simple. We write the LED high if we want it on, and we write the LED low, and we do this for each one of those. And that is all we need to do for this sketch. It's actually quite short, but it does a lot with just four buttons and a potentiometer. So now we're ready to do a demonstration and show how this works with just a single motor. So let's take this one. And let's take the, I'm not sure where the potentiometer is, but we'll just press some buttons. So here the uh, stepper motor is going in one direction. Make that easier to see. It's going in this direction. And press this button, it goes in this direction. Now if we, uh, we can hold the potentiometer at the same time and it goes, that's, that's the fastest it'll go because I'm on 1 16th steps. And as we turn it to the left, it goes slower and slower and it appears to stop, but I assure you it is not. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to demonstrate this. I, I guess I'll zoom in as far as I can go. But this is definitely turning, and it's tapping. Look at it very slowly. You can see it turning. 
but we have a super fine control. And it will go to that speed in either direction. Here we're going to go the other way. And you can see it's just very slowly turning. And so it's really that simple. We have fast control or slow control. So let's hook it up to the telescope and I'll show you how it works. All right, now we've disconnected it from the computer and now it is powered solely from our power supply from our five volt bus right here. Okay, so the Arduino is on and I've connected the motors. So we have one set here going to this bus and then another set going to the other bus. Now, uh, bear in mind that this is a prototype and so it's not exactly pretty but it works and so the original gear that I had down here did not work so I had to just go to the uh, shop and cut it all off and just attach uh, a piece to attach it to the telescope but in the future version I'll get that all cleaned up I probably won't even use a gear but for now it works and so this is going to be in the x, uh, x y direction now you can't move it because I have it on and stepper motors hold but you can shut it off and then just position it anywhere you want. So there's a gear down there and it engages into the gear uh, on this axis. Okay. Now coming up here, then I have another gear and I only have 90 degrees because that's all I need. There, anything more than that is just a waste of time. And then I have a, a similar gear here and this will move this in this direction. Okay, this would be the Z direction. So let's try it. All right. Now let's turn the potentiometer up a little bit. And there's one direction, and there's the opposite direction. Now we can turn the potentiometer up or down to vary the speed. Now when we have our target in, in the viewfinder and we want it a little bit finer, we can take this down to zero and this is our micro stepping and you have to listen. You hear a bang 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 bang. And that is the micro steps in either direction. And if you look really closely, if I zoom in here, you should be able to see that. Alright, let's see if we can see it. Very slowly that way. Very slowly that way. Okay. Now we go on to the other axis. Right now to move our telescope up and down, that's the microfine control. I'll turn it up. We'll go faster. And that gets there pretty quickly. We don't have to waste a lot of time. And likewise we can slow it down. And adjust it as we need it. So there you go. It works. I've tested it and I really like it. Alright, so here we are and looking at an image of the moon and I'm going to move this to the right. So as the moon tracks down, I'm going to tap it over just a little bit. There you go. Put it back in the center. A couple more and a few more and this makes it so much easier to photograph and it's a lot less frustrating a lot more fun so i hope you found this video helpful and i'll talk to you later